Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. I know what you're thinking. Paul, I just watched your epic charity live stream yesterday and I saw that you shaved your beard. So what gives? Well, there's two possibilities. Either I recorded this tech news on Friday or my beard is so vigorous and powerful that it simply grew back overnight. While well, you ponder the implications either way, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who stopped by to say hello to Kyle and I yesterday. It was a truly wonderful event and because of your generosity, we raised more this year than ever for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals via Extra Life. If you weren't able to join us, that's totally okay, but you can still participate by donating through the end of the year or by entering the giveaways that are still open until later this week. And for those of you who aren't content to simply hear about a bunch of money being raised for sick children who couldn't otherwise afford specialty care, I guess some tech news stuff happened this week too, but it was mostly about GPUs, which means it was mostly depressing. You've been warned. Excellent! Today's video was brought to you by the new Lightwings fans from Be Quiet, which combine legendary near silent operation with optimal performance and of course, RGB lighting. Control the look of your PC with up to 20 addressable LEDs per fan and choose from standard PWM for airflow or PWM high speed for use with radiators and heat sinks. They're available in 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter sizes and suitable for any build in need of a functional and tasteful RGB upgrade. So for more on the new Lightwings fans from Be Quiet, click the sponsor link in the video description. Remember earlier this year when I would do the GPU health segment and we'd all have a chance to commiserate together and share our frustrations about the video card shortage? I do, but the memory grows dimmer each day. Those were good times though, when we could still muster up enough emotion to even feel frustrated, even if it was fueled by anger and disappointment. We didn't know how good we had it back then, really. New GPU launches were met with cynicism, sure, but I could at least bring myself to say something like, even if these RTX 3060s sell out immediately, at least having more GPUs on the market should improve the situation a bit. You'll find no such optimism for me in December 2021 one though, which is why this week's launch, if you can even call it that, of the RTX 2060 12 gig fails to stir up even the feeblest of emotions for me. Indeed, all that remains in the cold pile of ashes where my PC gaming enthusiasm once resided is bitterness and resentment. If anything, the RTX 2060 12 gig is indicative of how bad things have gotten. We're used to the pessimism that a new launch brings, and of course, the GPUs inevitably going out of stock within minutes and magically popping up on resale sites like eBay for double MSRP or more, and Tuesday's launch certainly had all of those things. But this time around, NVIDIA did not announce or promote the card at all. They simply added driver support and allowed AIB partners to start selling the GPU on Tuesday. Official announcements came from those partners, such as Galax, Gigabyte, Zotac, and MSI, who were also encouraged not to cede units to the press. It seems NVIDIA is keen on selling this card, but not on making its existence widely known to PC gamers. And perhaps the most telling reason why is that NVIDIA refuses to even provide an MSRP for the RTX 2060 12 gig, telling news outlets lets that it is a premium version of the RTX 2060 6 gig, and we expect the price to reflect that, like a condescending waiter at a snooty restaurant with no prices on the menus. If you have to ask the price, you probably can't afford it. But the fact is, the 2060 12 gig has modest upgrades over the original, more VRAM, yes, and 2176 CUDA cores, like the 2060 Super, but with the memory still on a 192-bit bus, the performance will land between the 2060 and the 2060 Super. That means it will still sit well below the RTX 3060 in terms of gaming performance. That card supposedly has a $330 MSRP, but guess what? Nvidia knows that the 2060 12 gig could sell for way more than that in today's market. But for some reason, just brashly stating that they're listing the 2060 12 gig for 500 or 600 bucks is a step too far for them. So Nvidia will do what they've been doing all year, maximize their profits. In this case, by leveraging a three-year-old design built in an existing 12 nanometer TSMC fab that's not overrun with orders like seven or five nanometer, dispense with the usual pleasantries like a formal announcement or sending review samples out and slide in an oopsie forgot the MSRP finishing move to create a thin veneer of legitimacy for marketplace resellers and scalpers who are already marking them up to 600 or 700 euros in markets where they were actually listed for sale. Oh, and by the way, the RTX 2060 12 gig is better for crypto mining than an RTX 3060, which should definitely help out the street price. And despite all those AIB partner press releases about the card launching, there have been precisely zero listings for it here in the US. Stock is expected to ramp up from the end of December through January though, and I'm sure that all that stock will go straight to retailers for consumers use, rather than being sold by the pallet to scalpers and GPU mining operations. Fingers crossed.
2022 will likely greet us with more of the same from GPU manufacturers, unfortunately, and the parade of launches that most gamers will just give zero f**ks about begins with an entry-level GPU, the RTX 3050, rumored to be an 8GB card that will probably get announced during the NVIDIA CES keynote on January 4th, and then launch about three weeks later on January 27th. Videocards.com believes it will be based on the GA106-150 GPU, CUDA core count is still unknown, and it will compete with the also unreleased AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT and Intel Arc A380, expected in January for AMD and Q2 for Intel. Hopefully for this launch, Nvidia will at least grace us with a ballpark MSRP, but I wouldn't hold out for actual retail availability while GPU cryptocurrency mining remains profitable. There will be high-end GPUs that you can't buy also launching in January, if rumors are to be believed, starting with an RTX 3070 Ti 16 gig model that could be announced December 17th with a planned January 11th launch. This will likely use exactly the same GPU under the hood as the existing 3070 Ti, the GA104, just with double the VRAM, so it won't be faster apart from VRAM limited situations. The new flagship 3090 Ti that I discussed last week will also apparently go up for sale on January 27th, which would probably mean an announcement on January 4th alongside the RTX 3050. The only rumored GPU without more leaked info is the RTX 3080 12 gig, which might indicate a pushed back launch or that the rumors were inaccurate in the first place. One way to potentially confirm rumors is EEC listings, though. That's the Eurasian Economic Commission, and Gigabyte had a slew of new entries that went public Tuesday. This includes the rumored RTX 3080 12 gig with 10 models listed, as well as the RTX 3070 Ti 16 gig, which has six variants, and the Radeon RX 6500 XT, which has three different SKUs and apparently just a four gigabyte VRAM configuration. The 6500 XT is also rumored to launch in January, and these listings would appear to confirm that. Different people have been dealing with the GPU situation in different ways though, and while some have taken to making weekly YouTube videos complaining about the shortage, others have sought out ways to both profit from it while also helping out fellow gamers. Larry and Stu, the proprietors of Falcodrin Stock Alerts, spoke with The Verge in an article published last week where they revealed some of the details about their operation. The premise is pretty simple. You sign up for alerts for a GPU or a PlayStation, their software scans retail listings and prompts you via Discord when products are available, you buy with their link and they earn an affiliate commission. That's a normal setup and a basic finder's fee, but Falcogen's operations have expanded this year as shortages have dragged on. More interesting to me was the discussion around e-tail purchasing and the proliferation of bots. It's a constant battle between retailers keeping their websites functional, bots finding new ways to circumvent anti-bot mechanisms to scoop up inventory or scrape stock and pricing data, and scalpers, resellers, and legitimate buyers vying for the next purchase. The frustrating part is that some bot developers have figured out how to skip the website browsing and add to cart operations and simply place orders directly with the retailer's servers, which bypasses most consumer facing traffic throttling methods that apply to web browsing and add to cart functions. There's also plenty of suspicion that retailers don't really care to fix this, as bulk orders from scalpers or otherwise are easier to ship and less likely to result in RMAs that can increase the retailer's operational costs. Check out the article for more details, but thanks Larry and Stu for fighting the good fight and gearing your service towards helping individual gamers in these trying times. Speaking of overpriced GPUs and trying times, wouldn't it be nice if GPU manufacturers could make more money? That's the goal of multiple requests from NVIDIA, HP, and Zotac to the US government. They would like a GPU exemption applied, or more accurately reinstated, to the 25% import tariffs that affect shipments from China. Although these tariffs were enacted during the previous administration, the US Trade Representative Office is now considering reinstating exclusions towards some products, and GPU makers would like that to include GPUs. I am of two minds. On the one hand, the tariffs were unpopular in the first place and often resulted in higher consumer prices for imported goods. On the other hand, even if exemptions are reinstated, GPU prices are dictated more by crypto mining profitability right now than actual cost, so it's unlikely that it would help out consumers for the time being. It would mean more money for GPU makers though, and thank goodness they sure have been struggling lately, and now I'm very, 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 very tired of talking about GPUs. So let's move on to Tech Briefs, where we apply a 25% tariff to words, so there are less of them which is why they are so brief. Oh, and speaking of more money for big tech manufacturers, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger penned an op-ed piece for CNN that went live Wednesday, where he makes the case for the US government subsidizing chip fab development, basically giving money to Intel and other chip makers to build more domestic manufacturing. 
The vehicle for these subsidies is the Chips for America Act, which would invest 52 billion US dollars in domestic semiconductor capacity and capability, but would also require congressional support. Again, two minds on this. Intel is hugely profitable, and maybe they don't need public funding for their private business ventures. At the same time, Europe, China, and others are subsidizing their semiconductor industries, and more domestic leading edge fabs would be a good thing. I'll leave it to you guys to figure out in the comments. I'm sure that will go very smoothly. Ubisoft decided to kick off NFT-based in-game rewards on Tuesday, posting a now unlisted video showing off helmets or similar armor in Ghost Recon Breakpoint with a unique code inscribed on them that means they're special and totally belong to you and only you. NFTs are just objectively really dumb though, and the video managed to remind us all why we are still mad that the YouTube like counter was removed, since the fan reception drew about a 95% dislike ratio according to Video Games Chronicle. I'm inclined to agree with the top comment right now. I don't even need to see the dislikes anymore. You can just feel them. Crypto miners who pirated Windows with a popular unlock tool called KMS Pico have recently found out that the illegitimate software contained a stowaway, CryptBot, malware that specifically targets cryptocurrency applications in order to skim sensitive information and hijack your wallet, stealing your internet money and making you wonder why you didn't just pay 15 or 20 bucks for a gray market Windows key. We are, of course, all very sad for these crypto miners slash software pirates. And yes, though the Hindus speak of karma, I implore you, Give them a break. Rockstar has not announced GTA 6 yet, instead adding more content to GTA 5. Except not really GTA 5, GTA Online, which is where they make lots and lots of money. The story-focused expansion will go live December 15th and features story mode character Franklin, who now runs a celebrity solutions agency years after the events of the game's single-player campaign. Naturally, Dr. Dre is also there. He made some new music for the update, just in case you forgot about him. If you have an NVMe SSD and are running Windows 11, you might not be getting full performance. Although reports of SSD slowdowns in the new OS have been around for a couple months now, the issue persists, and more recent updates seem to indicate that it's the operating system drive that could be affected, while add-on SSDs should perform normally. Images posted to the Windows support forums show as much as a five times improvement for the same drive when not configured as the Windows boot device. Hopefully Microsoft can determine the root cause and issue a patch soon. Finally, the family safety app Life360, which boasts 33 million users, was accused Monday of selling the precise location data of those 33 million users for profit without their knowledge. Two former Life360 employees worked with the markup to show that the app acts as a firehose of data for interested parties with few safeguards to prevent the misuse of this sensitive information. The article does show how to disable the sale of your location data in the app, but if you're relying on a solution like this to track your family's whereabouts, keep in mind that the data collected has value and it's worth keeping tabs on who has access to it. Maybe consider hiring a private eye instead or just a really long leash. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week and indeed the penultimate Paul's Tech News of 2021. I just wanted to give you guys advanced notice that I'll be taking a couple weeks off from the show at the end of the year. I must rest and recover my strength before we begin 2022. Your feedback is always welcome though, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the description. If you're interested in further reading, you can also click the like button. If you enjoyed this video, check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, new designs, shirts, mugs, and pint glasses, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next week.